Hello and welcome to FP Live. I'm Ravi Agrawal, Foreign Policy's Editor-in-Chief. Now, one week ago, a concealed bomb in an Iranian guest house killed Hamas's political leader, Ismail Haniyeh. He has since been replaced by the architect of Hamas's October 7th attack, Yahya Sinwar. Most observers blamed Israel for Haniyeh's assassination, but many also wondered how Iranian intelligence could have failed to this extent. The high-profile assassination occurred in a guest house controlled by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard in the middle of a city brimming with security for the new Iranian president's inauguration. For its part, Tehran has vowed that it will seek vengeance, as have some of its proxies, because of course, just the day before, Israel also assassinated a top Hezbollah commander in Beirut. If you remember our April episode right after Iran's first direct attack on Israeli soil, you will know that Tehran has indicated it does not want escalation. At home, the country is planning for the political succession of its aging supreme leader, and it is also struggling with a mix of economic malaise and popular unrest, not to mention the global anxiety over Tehran's nuclear programs. But Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has ordered a direct attack on Israel in retaliation, and so the world holds its breath. So, how will Iran respond to the latest attacks, and how will these tensions impact ceasefire efforts in Gaza? I have a key Iran observer joining me to shed light on all of this. Trita Parsi is the Executive Vice President for the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft, he also co-founded and formally ran the National Iranian American Council. Trita, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to have you on. So let's start with Iran. Tehran has said it will respond to what it sees as a humiliation and assassination on its own soil on a big day for the state, something that clearly highlights an intelligence failure. How do you think it's gaming out a response? This was a profound humiliation uh, of Tehran and a deliberate one. The Israelis had the capacity of being able to assassinate uh, Hania in other instances, but they chose this one specifically, and I don't think that was a coincidence. They wanted to maximize the humiliation, the embarrassment, particularly mindful of the fact that Israel is not winning in Gaza. But by maximizing the humiliation, they also maximized the likelihood that the Iranians would respond militarily. I think Iran is now also in some ways trapped itself in a bit of an escalatory cycle because it chose to abandon the strategic patience strategy that he had had up until April. And at least in the beginning, it seemed the Iranians thought that they had actually managed to restore deterrence. But after this very humiliating assassination, clearly not only has that been a failure, but because of the fact that they responded in April, it has put all the more pressure on them now that they have to respond as well. The question it has to face, though, is how do you respond now, given the fact that this was in some ways worse than what happened in Damascus, without escalating matters into a full-scale war, which the Iranians clearly do not want. In April, they talked about retaliation, restoring deterrence, things of that nature. This time, you're hearing rhetoric of blood for blood, suggesting that this time around, they're actually looking for casualties. Whereas last time, it appears that a key objective they had was to inflict damage on Israel, but without causing casualties in order to deprive Israel of a pretext for further escalation. This was a guest. Uh, this was a guest at the inauguration that actually makes it more uh, important for them to uh, retaliate because this has embarrassed them in front of all of these different other groups that they have tied to themselves in this axis of resistance. Mm. The signal the Israelis essentially sent is that no one from the axis is safe anywhere and Tehran cannot protect you. This dramatically reduces Iran standing within those different groups. And as a result, the pressure on them responding is actually greater, most likely, than it would have been had it been an Iranian official that had been assassinated.